welcome to a special edition of Fleet Momentum video series produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine. And this video series is designed to put a spotlight on key leaders in the fleet management industry. And today I have the honor to interview Terry Titus, National Sales Manager Fleet for Drive Reach Fleet by WeBoost. And Terry's going to talk with us today about how a reliable connectivity solution can increase your fleet's productivity safety and efficiency. So with that, thank you for joining us, uh, Terry. Thank you for having me, Mike. Yeah. So let's uh, let's start with our um, first question. And, you know, and it's an interesting thing that I learned also, you know, one of the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic has been this explosion of virtual meetings. And I think, you know, all of us can speak um, firsthand about that. You know, there's also been an explosion in homeschooling, streaming video that are people watching, increased cellular use. And the consequence is all of that is really straining the cellular network. So can you explain how your product, Drive Reach Fleet by WeBoost, addresses this problem and helps to amplify cell phone signals? Sure, Mike. Thanks for uh, the question. And you're exactly right. We're having a huge issue right now, not just in the world, um, but in the U.S. especially. We have 360,000 cellular towers with 364 million people using multiple devices. With the upsurge of all the technology being used, as you mentioned before, um, there's more than ever a need for much better connectivity, so fleets have productivity. We've had many fleets come to us and say, hey, in areas where we used to be, we can't get any cell signal. Well, it's basically because the towers are overloaded and it's very difficult to connect. So we have a very simple system. And basically what our system does is it goes out to the cellular tower and you'd think it was the closest, but it's actually not. It's going to go out and grab a signal from the best tower. It's going to take that signal in through an external antenna, bring it into your vehicle, all your devices. And Mike, what I mean by that is there's so many internal devices now in fleets with them being mobile. We can have up to two to four different devices um, in any uh, fleet vehicle. They're becoming more and more mobile offices. This technology is disruptive and it will amplify every LTE signal that you have within your fleet vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and another important point uh, is that it doesn't matter which carrier you're using. I mean, you could go to a cell phone tower for another carrier if it's the strongest signal. Absolutely, so what happens is in an area, Verizon may own one tower, AT&T another, um, and then T-Mobile may be miles away. And all of a sudden I have a T-Mobile phone in my, in my vehicle and I can't reach the cellular tower. It's still going to use the, the signal from the closest tower. Mm -hmm. It's carrier agnostic. So if, for instance, it'll go out and it could hit the Verizon tower or the AT&T, still going to bring in the system, um, in the signal. And to further illustrate that point, if you have an AT&T telematics system, which a lot of telematics are run on that, and you also have a Verizon iPad and a Verizon phone, the signal's going to come into the vehicle, all three devices will be amplified. Um, in the case of such, a, such things as a MiFi, it will also amplify that. There is a misnomer that if I have a MiFi, I'm going to have a better signal. And anything in your vehicle is only as good as the external signal. Good point. Yes, it's very true. That's an excellent advantage that you're offering um, uh, field workers around the field. You know, another area that I like you to touch upon is, you know, we've all experienced this. You know, we're, we're especially if we're on the move, you know, we're traveling in, in dead cellular zones. And, and how does your uh, product help uh, uh, eliminate that issue? Um, Mike, again, it goes out um, to illustrate the point. It does go out um, and it does grab that signal. The beauty of it is it's amplified 75%. So no matter where you're traveling in city, rural, interstate areas, there's self dead cell zone areas. Quick example is I can walk down 
my street and I live in a very suburban area, I could have no cell phone coverage and I do, I can't make a phone call. If I drive down that same road with my booster, I have five signals. And fleets across the country are experiencing this problem, especially with the uptick of not only the LTE, but all of the um, additional vehicles that are now on the road. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of productivity advantages, but a, another advantage that comes into play is really in the in the area of safety, which is you know a key fleet concern. And um, uh, I was wondering if you could uh, address the safety aspect, and then also um, how this could be used as a driver retention tool. Sure, um, this is actually used for all ty different types of things. You know, it, it has the advantage of with the constant connectivity. It keeps the driver safe. It keeps them um, properly routed. So in terms of a driver being able to, um, instead of getting lost and having to drive um, around the uh, all around a city to find where they're going, they can immediately get routed because their GPS is working. Mm -hmm. A lot of times drivers have to drive 30 minutes or more to get a cellular signal. Um, and so that's, that's really a huge disadvantage. We just had a FedEx company call us. That's, um, a private entity. They had a driver that had to drive, walk two miles. He called and said, I want your booster. I don't ever want that to happen. It's a huge liability. We don't want any, um, anything happening to our employees. And that happens a lot, even in the oil fields where they're coming down the rigs, a truck can easily roll. And with our booster, you can immediately find it. So that um, that specifically answers the question on, on safety. Um, Mike, then your next question, I driver believe- retention. Was, it, there's a driver retention aspect to this also. Absolutely. And so that piece of it, Mike, is um, a lot of times if drivers have to um, drive and drive and drive to connect, a, connect to a signal, they're very frustrated because they may have to um, work two hours over time. The other thing is they may not be able to connect with their, their superiors and that causes a lot of friction within um, the relationship between the two. Um, they tend to be hesitant, believing each other and that causes a problem. The last thing is we don't think about it, but if my, if my wife is in labor, say I'm not obviously a husband, but, um, and I need to reach her on a regular basis, if my cellular phone's not working, I really probably don't want to work there um, because that's a huge that's a huge issue for me. So a happy driver is a driver that you retain. Yes. And, you know, a lot of fleet managers, they'll work within corporate headquarters where there's a good cell phone um, uh, receptivity and, and might be totally unaware of this uh, could being an issue for some of the drivers out in the field. So it kind of behooves them to kind of survey their um uh, their driving force or field force out there as to whether that is an issue. And um, hey, this might be a good alternative for that. So we've discussed, you know, how it uh, increases productivity. So, you know, that's pretty apparent. Uh, just talked about driver retention, talked about safety, but there's also another important area. Uh, that's in the area of cost containment. So, you know, I'm thinking in particular, you know, limiting idling time, increasing fuel, uh, decreasing fuel consumption and uh, miles driven. Again, you know, searching uh, for that area where they get receptivity again. But can you elaborate on that? How is this a cost containment tool? Oh, my gosh, it's a cost containment tool in many ways, Mike. What most fleets don't realize is lack of productivity is really costing them money. They measure every single thing, you know, fuel, et cetera. But if the driver's not lost or not able to have that constant communication, they are driving more, which means they're idling more. Often they pull over to try and try and try to connect and that's further idling time. Um, and the less, idle, or the less idling time, the less uh, missions draw. Um, and in terms of ROI, um, each different piece of things that are going to happen, if I can submit um, pictures that I'm taking in the field quickly, I'm going to provide better service. I'm going to keep my customers. Mm -hmm. We have fleets that provide 4 million pictures or more on an upload in a year. Um, and that's just crazy. We have some that, that have 4 billion. Think of Amazon and all the pictures they take. It's, right. it's astronomical. Um, and you also have on-time data tr transmissions 
um, up-to-date invoicing, and the list goes on. So those are all the different things. And in terms of return on investment, our system's low cost. Um, and by that, I mean, it's a very um, small cost to put into your fleet. It's pennies on the dollar. And the great thing about it is there isn't any monthly fee afterwards. So at the end of the day, if you did a cost calculation, um, a large fleet could save into the millions of dollars and could pay for the booster in one to two months. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, you brought up a good point in passing right there. You know, if you're going to have a nationally dispersed uh, field force out there, um, and this is a cost containment tool where you can minimize idling, minimize fuel consumption. By default, you're minimizing your emissions and it could lend itself towards mm -hmm. achieving your corporate sustainability goals. So that was a good Absolutely. point that you brought up there. You know, a, another point that I hear in talking with uh, fleet managers is we're all going through this transition towards 5G. That seems to be a very common question. Will your device work with uh, uh, 5G? Um, and I'm wondering if you can uh, elaborate on that. Um, yes, Mike, and that's a common question we get quite often. You know, as fleets are becoming more mobile offices and really, again, two to four devices, everyone's worried that once the 5G technology gets out there, it won't work with our boosters and, and they'll be paying money for no service. That's absolutely incorrect. Currently, um, we're working on 4G LTE technology and the new 5G right now is what they call a carrier aggregation, which means there's multiple, multiple bands and there's multiple signals that all come together to give the 5G technology. Yeah. Our technology actually amplifies all the bands that are uh, supporting that technology, giving you more than a 75% better signal um, and further enhancing um, your fleet performance, efficiency, um, ROI, and driver satisfaction. Yeah, very good. You know, it's a um, powerful tool. It, it helps in a lot of different areas. So. Uh, but unfortunately, we've reached our allotted time now. I uh, want to thank you, uh, Terry, for a great, uh, concise um, explanation on how your product works. And I'd like to thank you again for a great conversation. And uh, thank you again for joining us. Thanks so much, Mike. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. And uh, it's great to be in this industry.